Welcome to a new video on OpenID Connect and OAuth 2. The goal of this video is to spin up an instance of Keycloak just like the one you see here. But why do we care about Keycloak and what is Keycloak? As part of our ongoing series about different authentication methods for Kubernetes, we've come across OpenID Connect. And the very cool thing about OpenID Connect is that the identity provider is completely decoupled from the API server. So your API server does not have a runtime dependency to the identity provider, and the identity provider does not become a single point of failure in our architecture. So we already have the API server. That's our Kubernetes API. And what we need then is the identity provider. And that is where Keycloak comes in. Keycloak is both an identity provider and a token issuer for OAuth2 tokens. So let's get started with spinning up our Keycloak instance. Luckily, these days, spinning up an instance of anything isn't really that much difficult anymore because we have Docker. And spinning up Keycloak is really as simple as running a Docker container. So we have to start with a Docker run. And we want to expose the port that Keycloak is running on. And I happen to know that's running on 8080 and also want to expose it on 8080. Next, we need to set two environment variables to configure access to our Keycloak instance. And this is Keycloak user. And that will just be the admin user for now. And also we have Keycloak password. And that will just put to pass for now. So next we need to specify the image. And this is JBoss slash keycloak and let's start it up so this is now booting up and is using an embedded h2 database you can also specify an external database but for our testing purposes it's completely fine to use this um, non-persistent database that's being spun up in the container so that it also means when we destroy the container or create a new container we lose all our data but since we're just reproducing a local setup here, that is of course fine. In a production setup, you might want to keep your data. So it looks like it's ready. So let's go to the browser and navigate to local localhost 8080. And there we go. Welcome to Keycloak. Let's click the link for the administration console and try it out with admin and pass. There we go, we're in our Keycloak instance in the master realm. So what do we need to configure with Keycloak to make it work with Kubernetes? We already have our very first user, the admin user. In a real life situation, you might not wanna uh, use your admin user of the uh, identity provider to lock into Kubernetes, but for our testing purpose, well, where all we want is a uh, token that's been issued by Keycloak, that is completely fine. So we already have a user. But what else do we need? Let's check the specification of OAuth and start here at the bottom with the authorization server, which is our Keycloak instance that we've just spun up. So let's read that. The server issuing access tokens to the client after successfully authenticating the resource owner and obtaining authorization. So there's three parts in it. The server issuing access tokens, that's Keycloak, to the client, what's a client, after successfully authenticating the resource owner. Okay, so let's maybe start start at the beginning, uh, at the end here. The resource owner is defined up here. An entity capable of granting access to a protected resource. When the resource owner is a person, it is referred to as an end user. So that's our user. That's pretty clear. But there's also the client. So let's read what a client is. An application making protected resource requests on behalf of the resource owner and with its authorization. The term client does not imply any particular implementation characteristics. For example, whether the application executes on a server, desktop, or other devices. So it looks like we need a client to represent a machine. And this machine that we have here that will make authorization requests on behalf of the user is our Kubernetes cluster. So we need a client that represents the Kubernetes cluster so that the user the resource owner can get a, t a token issued by the authorization server and that should be as simple as opening up the ui here clicking clients and creating a new client and let's call the client kubernetes cluster so you can see i've done this before cool there we go so we have our client we have our client now, and we also have the user that we used to log into Keycloak already, so we really should be ready to go. Unfortunately, that's not everything that is required, though. If we were to point our 
Minikube cluster to this instance of Keycloak right now, it wouldn't quite work out yet. And I've already done that in the background. And as you can see here with the Minikube locks, we're getting API server exit with error, invalid authentication config, blah, 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 has invalid scheme HTTP. So it requires HTTP to be used for the communication to the identity provider. And when you think about it, that really makes sense because we're putting a lot of trust in that identity provider. We basically say, if the this identity provider has signed a token, we completely trust the entire content of the token. So it really doesn't make sense to use HTTP here because that basically means anyone could have messed with it. So what we need to do is set up HTTPS for our Keycloak instance. That sounds quite simple because Keycloak also exposes an HTTPS port by default, just on port 8443. However, having said that, that uses a self-signed certificate and we don't know signed by which certificate authority. So Minikube will just complain that it's uh, not a valid certificate. But I have a solution. I've created this repository here. And I'll put the link to that also into the uh, description. I've created this uh, repository and that's basically the same as we've just set up. But instead of just running a Docker command, it runs a Docker compose file. And in that compose file, we basically have that key cloak here in the same way we just configured it before. Also added a proxy uh, address forwarding uh, that it needs if it's behind a proxy. And then there's an nginx and this nginx has SSL configured. It's listening on port 443 and it's forwarding to our Keycloak instance here, and it uses a key that you can create. There's a script uh, create CA, and there's also a script to issue these certificates. So how I built that, that's way too much for this video. So I'll upload a separate video or a separate series on how to use Nginx to protect a non-HTTPS uh, web server with HTTPS. But for now, that means we can just use it. And all we have to do is do a Docker compose build if you haven't done it and then a docker compose up and once this is ready we can go to our browser and point that to localhost 8443 and of course with https in front and my browser browser will not trust this certificate well actually it will because i've already told it to trust it but um, otherwise i would see a warning right here and you can see um, it's not secure here that is because i have not added this ca to my browser, but we can add it to uh, our Minikube. We can specify which CA to trust, and then Minikube will completely trust this self-signed certificate. So let's wrap this video up. It was about spinning up Keycloak, and we have Keycloak now, and with this uh, trick here, we also have Keycloak running on HTTPS. So that means we're now really ready to go to point our Minikube cluster to this uh, OpenID Connect issuer, and that will be part of the next video.